keep back. I did have an out of body experience, so your death get to get Yeah, it's amazing. He said uh, you saw yourself on the operating table, but then, then you turned and you saw fire in the hallway. Yes. That's so amazing. And I ran out the doorway, and as I was running, I had both hands up in the air. And I said, get out, everybody, get out. The hospital's on fire. Did anybody acknowledge that, or did they notice you? No, they were all busy in their own spot doing their thing. Wow. But so you were like a ghost, I, maybe. And then I turned around and I, and I, I was, the fire was so close to me and I just turned around in my face. I kept, what was I, I was running forward but looking backwards, you know. I, oh, my neck was crazy, if you could see that. Hmm. What was the, what was the last thing you remember from that out of body the last experience? Thing I, I remember is just holding my hand up in the hallway and then I put my hand down and I saw the fire just just right in my face and I turned around. When I woke up, I was in bed and when I woke up, Angie, I kept looking in the hallway and something. There wasn't anything going on, no excitement, no, no burn marks. I was looking for it everywhere. And there was no fire? No. Wow. That's how real it was. And then the next thing was my mom and dad coming in. Oh, it was so sweet, Angie. My mother pokes her head in, she goes, well, hello. And Jared, my dad walked in. She grabbed me and she just shook me side to side with kiss me. She goes, Hija, that's star in Spanish. Don't give off. Don't go. And I thought to myself, go where? Because I didn't understand what had happened. And then later on, some nurses who were working on me said, Yeah, her heart stopped for like a half an hour. Jeez. Mm -hmm. Oh, your mom and, and dad started, love you so much. Yeah. I started putting two and two together and I said, that's what you actually had, June, was a near-death experience. So I told my doctor and he said, June, yeah, that's how everybody described it. But what gets me is other people, when they describe it, when they see that light, they say it's such a beautiful thing. I don't know if you've read about it. It's so beautiful. The call dropped. Let's call her back. She's telling us about her out-of-body experience in 1985, 1986. Summer 1986. She died and came back to life. Hi, I was talking to my mom and the call dropped. Um, I think I was talking to her phone in her bedroom. Should I call that back? Yeah. Okay. Oh, sure, yes. Let me see. What's her name? June Marburger. Oh, sure. Hold on one second. Thank you. Hold on one second. Thank, 5721. Thank you. I'm gonna pause this video while you connect. Are you okay? Yes, our call dropped. I don't know. You were talking, and our call just went bloop. <laughs> oh, I'll be darn. Okay. But, okay. Yes. Okay. Oh. Yeah. And, you know, and my sister Linda asked me how I felt, and I said I wasn't afraid. I just had this feeling of, of uh, a, a sense of struggle, and like no. When I saw the fire, mm -hmm. and she says, Well, June, that shows that you were not ready to go yet. And I believe it. Wow. And then I get so depressed. I think this is why I have my psychiatrist. Yeah, I'm God so glad. Harry. Yeah, you have. Harry is a great I, brother, and you've got a good medical team, and 
Mary is a great sister. You've got, is Patsy still there? Is she around? Oh yeah, but it's just that nobody can come visit us because of this COVID virus. Oh yeah, gosh. Well, I'm glad they're nearby and we can call you on the phone. I wish, I really wish I could massage you. Like, oh, God. I know, so just a, oh. just a few minutes ago, well, all day long, I was thinking about your mom, your Grandma Baca, yes. Cecilia. Oh, so I just, like, my life is starting to become like hers. You know, she was always so busy and so careful with everything, and she, she saved yes. all, she saved water, and she, she never bought paper towels. She was just uh, very careful, and, um, and one time Chris said that uh, she offered him some orange juice, and Chris said, oh, sure, I'd like some orange juice. So she stood there, and she squeezed an orange. You know, she squeezed, like, three oranges into a glass, and that was just the most beautiful thing. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's so nice. I just remember that. Yes. And like I feel like I appreciate the way she lived because she was so resourceful and she appreciated every yes. little thing and always exactly. busy, always working. Yes. We, uh, me and my sister discussed that too and we all agree. What I remember as a little girl was she was always bent down on her hands and knees scrubbing the floor, scrubbing the Always keeping everything clean for seven children, oh right? Oh my God, yes. So. And that's why I don't think we had the diseases all the other kids do is because we were clean. Yeah, you guys were clean. Yeah. And then One you thing she stressed, and that's the way I am too. Yeah, I love that, because um, you raised me clean. I remember you taught me how to clean, you taught me how to make faucets shiny. I remember when I was seven, we lived in California. How to make what shiny? Like, you know how, when you turn on the water faucet? Oh, yeah. The, the chrome, you, you taught me, um, first you spray it with Windex and you wipe it down, and, and then you said, then you take, then you go over it with a dry towel, and then it gets shiny. Yeah, that's uh, right. Yeah, you and Dad were so clean, I loved it, and so... I grew up clean and <laughs> um, yeah, you learn from what you what you you grow up with. Mm -hmm. And um, also, what was I gonna say? Oh, I remember you told me when you were children, whenever you guys caught a cold or something, um, your mom would say go out and play. And it's true, like you you heal better when you're out in fresh air. Uh huh. It's true, and I feel that way also. Oh, yeah. Like fresh air cures a lot of uh, sure does. lung uh, well, issues. Nowadays, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, something weird is going on in the world. But I'm, yeah, I still, I just, I'm still outside uh, playing. Everything's good. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people are ignoring it. We, we, if we leave our rooms, we can, we have to wear masks. Yeah, yeah. Everybody uh, has to wear a mask now. So I wear a yeah. mask because. And it's all right, and it's okay during the winter time too, because our nose it's, oh, yeah. it's warm with the mask on now. <laughs> oh yeah, you keep your nose warm. I feel for these aids. God bless them. They have to suit up you know, these uh, scrubs all before they enter the room. They have to wear the masks, and I tell them, God bless you guys. You be, you know how. I mean, they're going the extra mile for us. They can't come in the room without wearing masks. 